Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our second installment of DLC 6 Home Turf uh, webcast. We're going to be showing you a little bit about layer themes and the props that you can put in them. Uh, last time we talked about locations, how to set up your base, where you could set them up. Now we're going to go inside those bases and get a little more in depth in terms of their customization and all the themes that you'll be able to experience doing them. So uh, my name is Jens Anderson. I'm the creative director on the project and I'm joined today by two people who are going to help me explain all this to you. We have our lead environment artist, Ben Nauman. Hello. It's nice to meet all you. And uh, uh, you're virtually meeting everybody. You have like thousands yeah. of new friends as of this instant. I feel like I really do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so make sure to check the chat later and see how many friends you really have. <laughs> Maybe 50 50. Um, all right, so, and we also have joining us again Andrew Bushman, who's assistant designer on the project and helped us out with the locations. He's going to be helping us out a little bit with uh, the prop stuff today. All right, glad to be back. Um, so let's get started. You can see right here we've got a character who's in Metropolis, specifically uh, Little Bohemia. And uh, you can see he's in the area down by the boardwalk. The gorillas are, are off to the, to the right here doing their thing. And he's got a base set up. In fact, he's got a few bases set up in Little Bohemia. And we're going to walk through each of these. Um, the first bases we're going to talk about today, let's head on inside, are the Gothic and Deco themes. Now both of these themes are going to be available for you with the purchase of the DLC or if you're legendary and have access to the DLC, you'll be able to choose between those two themes for your lair. And this is the deco theme. So Ben, you want to tell us a little bit about the deco theme and what, what the goals here were between Gothic and deco? The big difference was we wanted to make sure that we had two themes, one that represented each of the cities, right? Or, like what I should say is there's a theme that matches each of the two cities so we got Gothic and we have Deco. Now Deco here we're going for that same streamlined slick look of Metropolis. Uh, clean but not too clean. Uh, it matches the look of some of the buildings inside of Metropolis. Um, yeah. And then Gothic which we'll see in a little while will reflect more of those Gotham themes that you guys built into the city as well. We'll, we'll talk about those when we get into the actual gothic area as well. But now both of these uh, uh, are available. It's not like you can only use Deco in Metropolis, right? That's right. You can use Deco inside of um, you can use Deco inside of Gothic, and vice versa. Right. So our Gothic can be in in, uh, in Metropolis as well. It's just all there's locations for both of these bases in both cities. Yes. Okay. So basically, let's get into uh, what what the theme means to you when you choose it. So when we went through all the location stuff and we made a deed and we chose our location, uh, the theme had a lot to do with where the location was located. It also has a lot to do with what the amenities look like inside of it and uh, what the actual interior looks like as well. So as you can see, this is the Gotham or the sorry the Deco interior, and over there um, to the left you can see this. This is what's called the dispenser. We'll talk about what that does and its relationship to the mainframe in a webcast uh, later on. But you can see it has a kind of deco look to it. And if you go into the main part, like sort of the heart of your lair, uh, you'll be able to see the mainframe and what it looks like as sort of a deco. And each one of the themes has a different set of amenity looks. That's correct. We went through and for all the different lair themes, we went through, made a set of amenities that were custom to it. You don't see them anywhere else in the game. They have a, a really higher fidelity than the rest of the items in the game. You're not going to see them anywhere else. Uh, artists had a lot of fun putting them together. I think that the players are really going to enjoy them. They're going to definitely be one of the highlights of housing. Right on. All right, so there's that main area you come in, right? And then you've got your dispenser over there. There's uh, uh, this sort of main area. And as you can see, Andrew's walking through. And if you walk into the back here, you'll see this whole sort of heart of the layer area with a mainframe. But there's also kind of this upstairs loft. There's a downstairs as well uh, where you can uh, uh, also put some stuff. So. This is a, a placeholder for a generator, which is something we'll be getting to in a, a, a later update or later DLC. Um, but we'll talk about amenities in another time. But all of this space is there for you to decorate, to get your feng shui on, right? That's correct. <laughs> That's right. We try and we tried to make it, you know, as player friendly as we possibly could. So, you know, try to keep the walls as clean as possible so that you can put whatever items you manage to collect into them. Okay. So let's talk about putting stuff in there. Uh, Andrew, why don't you take us over to the the main console for decorating and start walking us through some of the some of the process here. So um, should we actually talk about props first? Sure. Uh, so throughout gameplay, you know, adventuring, you know, purchasing purchasing these through the broker, 
uh, various avenues, you'll collect housing props. Uh, these are added to your inventory in this state. Once you get them, you can collect them. You'll interact with them, get this pop-up. Here it'll ask you if you'd like to add them to your base inventory. Uh, when you say yes, you can navigate across up here, and you can see that it's been added to this list of other uh, base items that I own. You've been a busy bee. A little bit. Hitting mm -hmm. the flea markets and the, uh, the garage sales. That's right. <laughs> the superhero garage sales at Ace Chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can see there's a lot of stuff here. There's a, a palace, uh, different themes in the names, too. You can see a cult. You can see palatial and palace. Uh, there's a, uh, a bunch of different sort of uh, themes for props. And how do those kind of factor into things going forward? Right. Andrew? Well, there, there's just a multitude of items. We have anything you could want to put in your house. Uh, fun house, game room, gym, law enforcement, some military stuff, workshop, palace, laboratory if you want to get your mad scientist on, some uh, mystical and dynasty stuff, and a cult, as you can see here. So a bit of everything. And random, like... Oh yeah, garbage and, and stuff like that. We were talking about what items we wanted to show, and and I think Halish was like, show them the the toilet from the dive, and you were like, how about the lumpy garbage bag? I was yeah. like, no 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 no. How about like stuffed woolly mammoth and no? things like that? You no drippy garbage bag. No dri drippy garbage bag. Okay. So anyway, but all joking aside, you can really see the the kind of like spectrum that the environment artists put together for items for you guys. Really, literally, there are like lumpy garbage bags and like, you know, cruddy pallets that you can put out into your house. And then there's also these really ornate palatial things as well, right? Yeah, you, you can totally go as high tech or, or fancy, modern. You can make it look like, a, uh, like, a, like a showroom of a furniture store or you can make it look like uh, a very run down, lousy apartment that's been sitting there for years. Exactly. So when you collect all these, are you going to be getting a little bing, ping, ding moment here for a feat, or? Uh, that's right. I all have right. all items here of the occult set. Whoa! And I will show that. Occult classic. Collect all of the base items in the occult sec sect. Okay, cool. And you, there's there's a variety of different feats for different styles that you can collect, right? This is perfect for the collector, as there are lots of lots of set items here for feats. Nice. Okay, cool. So now that you've added those, let's go into the actual decoration, the, so the control panel for the lair. And you can do two things here. You saw this earlier in our last webcast, the relocate base. We showed you how that works. We didn't go into the decoration mode, but we're going to do that now, finally. Boom. Hooray. So let's click on that. All right, so here we are. Uh, right now, uh, Andrew is driving this on the controller. Uh, so you can see all of the legend on the right side there is giving him that. And actually, Brian, would you mind touching the... Uh, mouse or keyboard or something for this. Now you can see, obviously, it switches over on the fly, and there are the controls that you'll be using for if you were running it on a PC. Uh, all very simple stuff to use, and we'll show you how to use them, but let me sh tell you what you're seeing right now in front of you. So that little yellow carrot is your pointer. That's basically showing you where you're going to be placing an object. Now when you first start the game, in, or sorry, when you first start off with your base, um, there is no free placement mode for you you're going to be placing objects inside those rings, which we're calling basically attach points or hard points, whatever it is you want to call them. They're, right. they're, they're actually uh, uh, places where you can put stuff. So until you have filled up enough of your sort of uh, your attach points here, you can't unlock free placement. But once you do, you're going to be able to free place stuff and put them in these nodes as well. For example, let's click on the ceiling here. So you can see that node is highlighted with yellow. Uh, you go ahead and uh, select that. And what it does is uh, the window over here brings out everything that you could possibly put in the ceiling node. These things are all categorized based on the, where the node is or if you're in free placement mode, what surface the pointer is touching. So That's you're right. never going to see a bed in the list when you're clicking on the ceiling, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so here he put in, uh, you can see he's putting in a demon skull that he's found. And he can move that around, try moving it outside. He can't move it outside the border of, of, that, uh, of that node, right? So, because it's not free placement mode. But he could move it anywhere in there. So larger objects can be slid around, as well as the smaller objects being put inside there. So go ahead and confirm that's where you want to put it. And boop, okay, you can see the node change color to white to let you know that that is an actual, that node is taken because when you get free placement mode, you can actually overlap these things, so you need to know if, if it's, that's a node placed item or an actual free placed item. Um, let's put something on the ground there, something really large. Sure, let's, let's 
actually do it next to the pillar. You do the pillar? Yeah. Right. Put something really large there. And let's check out the preview thing on the side. You guys see, uh, everyone can see that as you scroll down this list of uh, things you can put in that spot, you can select and preview everything. Um, you, got, you guys made so many. We did. We, did. We, had a, we had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, players are going to notice there's going to be some stuff that might be familiar because we did give oh, yeah, you definitely. we did give you some of the items <laughs> that were already in the game, but we we knew that that would be really lame to only do that, and so we just added a whole bunch of brand new items. As you can see, electric chair. Yeah. So now, once something's placed, uh, you can rotate it around, or you can select it again. You can remove it. You can rotate it around. Now, check this out. So you can he can pull it around in the border there, but if he inter actually makes it interpenetrate with the pillar, it turns red, meaning he can't place it there. So you can back stuff up against the wall, but it actually can't be interpenetrating in the wall. You do need to kind of wait till it turns green, and then you can place it, and it's available for you to, to check out there. Now, once you do enough of those types of placements, you're able to enter free, you're, you unlock free placement mode, which would allow you to do exactly what we just showed you, but off node. You want to start putting a few things like on the wall, wherever you really see fit or want to. to do it outside the node, like free placement. There sure. you go. So you can just put that, sure, a fan. Do it. Just put a fan right there. Move it around anywhere you want, in fact. And, and the range of motion on that, later pick it up again. Go ahead and show how far. You can just basically, once you get it on the ground, you can sit there and move it around and put it all you want. So yeah, you can send it down the hall, yeah, wherever. All, all the way down the hall if <laughs> you want to. Once you, get the, once you get to the edge, it'll drop down into the floor underneath. Yeah, try going up the side of the stairs sure. there. There you go. You can see it's kind of won't let you go off that surface, ah, right? Cool. So then and if you try and get it up onto the wall, it won't let you do that either because it's a ground item. It turns red. So everything is sort of restricted. Everything's really friendly. gives you good messaging on where you can place it and why. And then you have your fan in the middle of the room. <laughs> you probably should set that on oscillating if you're going to put it there, but whatever. It's a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now, what's that pink one in the background there? Is that? That looks like an amenity slot. Exactly. So not only do you have your main features, but you have these amenities. And these amenities are themed after the uh, the lair that yep. you have, the base style. That's correct. So here's the rest of the gothic stuff. And you can see there's an R&D station, a mailbox, a bank, suit holder. Tel uh, teleporter is not available at launch at this point, um, but it will, it will be coming along shortly. Um, we have uh, all these different styles for the Gothic there as well, because he has the Gothic style. These are the decos. Right. So why don't you go ahead and put your R&D station in there. Boop, and you can rotate it and move it around, put it in there. Cool. So that's your R&D station that you now have in your lair. And you can put these amenities on any amenity slot that is available. You, you can't right. free place these. Um, they do have set spots that the amenities can go in, but all other props that aren't amenities can be uh, can be placed anywhere you want. Like, uh, do you have a target dummy? Oh, let's see. Uh, amenity? No target dummy. Grab your okay. Okay, cool. So amenities can be placed, props can be placed, both on nodes and uh, free placement. Um, and you can decorate your entire layer. Let's do colors really quick sure. uh, and show them to how that works. So you can see there's a uh, button to hit your colors. So it defaults to the colors of your character, but you can go ahead and go off character and uh, change those if you want to. You can see uh, that. So the and you see the green on the um, on the uh, baseboard there changing and moving as he's. Uh, changing it around. Let's actually go on that orange and see if we can change that one. And the, the area, there's going to be three colors, and you won't be able to change every single surface. There will be accent areas that you can change. As you're seeing here, it's mainly the trim, but that changes between layers. It's not always the trim. It's not always mm -hmm. a decorative wall part. And so it's different between the different layers to give it a variety. Like yeah. cave, um, and I think industrial, or is it dive? But cave definitely has like walls that pick up more of the color yes. in certain areas yes, where the true. manufactured walls versus the rock walls. Yes. Like these walls here, you won't change the main wall color, but as you said, like the cave, the, the more built in cave walls change color. Now we allow friends that come into your lair, you can set a permission to allow them to decorate for you. So if you're not into decorating your lair, but you have a friend who is, um, you know, you can you can set that up to happen. For instance, I would not give Andrew Bushman permission <laughs> to decorate my lair because those colors you've just chosen are hideous. 
So sure. you do not get to monkey around in Milkman's base of operations and change those colors. Have to hire a decorator, man. Yeah, Ben, you and your masterful aesthetics. You, however, will get permissions to decorate my lair. Well, let's let's wait because I think one of the oh. layers we're about to go to is one I decorated, and then you can you can. Oh, do right. I think that <laughs> we all the whole world gets to all your that's new right. friends get to uh, right. judge your your decorating ability. Perfect. Okay, so um. Let's get out of here and actually go uh, check out a deco lair that's been fully decked out. Now, I'm not sure who decorated this one, um, but let's go to the map here. Uh, like we showed you on our last uh, webcast, you can go ahead and set a waypoint. Um, I think that is the deco lair you have. Yep, go ahead and set a waypoint to that. Um, and you can see now it's on the map. He can zoom through gorilla land here. Think about how much noise those gorillas make on the roof at night <laughs> trying to hack into. Why would you want to live there, dude? Oh. That's got to be like the it's worst the view. Do they throw poo at you oh, when no. you leave and enter with your groceries or anything yeah, like you that? You have to have a good landlord, huh? <laughs> it's the view. You're living there it's for that view. It's the view, so man. all of it just for that waterfront view. It's that waterfront view. <laughs> all right, let's go in here. All right, so this is Deco with some thought put into it. Um, so you can see here we've done some interesting things with this lair. There's a okay. Look down on this. See, I, I just want to say, get your foot off that. So it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's a zebra rug or a tiger rug. Which is it? A like an alp? Is it a Siberian tiger or a zebra? Uh, I don't know what this. I don't know what. I, Either way, its poor nose has been flayed on the... I think those are lips on the side or something. That's gnarly. All right. I, yeah, it's a zebra. All right. call it zebra. <laughs> You're calling zebra. <laughs> we, I, I will say that the art department called it a zebra rug. Okay. I don't know what it ended up being called when it got out to the public. But well, there's zebra nose and lips on that rug over there. So, <laughs> Okay, so let's look around here. you got a little uh, PlayStation uh, uh -huh. area there where you can play your video games. Yep, uh, entertainment center here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you go back deeper into the lair... You can see some other stuff. There's a little bar. Very nice. You say, and of course, you can put anything there. It doesn't have to be a bar. This could be like machinery and things, a fish tank. Some fish in there somewhere? I, I, you know, I like those little glass trophy cases. Um, yeah, there are definitely fish swimming around yeah. in there. Where's Nemo? Go find Nemo. Nemo in there. <laughs> Where's your lucky flipper, buddy? <laughs> oh, there he is. See him? Right there? Yeah, it's okay. Right there. <laughs> so uh, here's another little cool area by the mainframe. Uh, you can go upstairs and down if you want to, too, really quick, just to show some of that. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it's nice. a pretty cool like area up here with the freestanding fireplace right there to the right. Check that out. Wow. All right, he's a slightly better decorator. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, is this the one you did? I cannot take credit for this. All right, this uh, is somebody yeah. else. This, this is, is you. This is Eunice. This is one that uh, that I think Karen did. Oh, okay. One All of right. artists. Check out that. That's uh, from the law enforcement set, I think, right there. Those oh, statues, wow. yep. right? Yep. So those yep. are pretty cool. So there you have an example. That's one of the items that we that's available in game. But like you saw, the fish tank. There are no fish tanks that we have in the actual game, so you've seen you're seeing here the mix. Yeah, there's some stuff that you might have seen in the game where you're like, "Cool, I really want that for my lair." You'll be able to grab that thing for your lair because it's out there somewhere. That's and right. then there are other things that are totally original, so. such as this awesome drafting table. Nice draft. What is you drafting? Is that a bank heist? <laughs> Tell me that's a bank heist. It oh, sure it is. It's got to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just getting started on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just starting up. Oh, okay. Station? Yeah, sewing station for costume manufacturing. Remember, no capes. Oh, as we learned from the uh, Incredibles. <laughs> All right, let's pop out of here. Sure. Let's just go take a quick look at an empty Gothic lair, and then we'll go check out a, uh, a full Gothic lair as well. Um, maybe we can show a couple of the other uh, cool props in that empty Cross Gothic street. lair. It's just right there. Oh, and it's actually the other side of the building, but close enough. <laughs> and you're seeing the, the you're able top. to see there like the wide variety of items like. Not everyone's going to want to have the sewing machine. You're not going to want to have the, uh, the, the dress form, or the dress yeah. form mm -hmm. to be able to put the clothes on. So yeah, you could go with our like uh, military theme stuff, and there's like really cool like a weapons rack or yes. you know all kinds yes. of different things that you can put on there. There's really a lot, a lot of things. This isn't yep. just like you, if you want to make a grungy dive, you can do that. If you want to make like more of a industrial workshop, you can do that. If you yes. want to make something that's surrounded by the fineries that you've been able to afford through your villainous <laughs> activities, you can totally do that. Lots of different flavors. So here's Deco. You can see the different shape of the amenity right there. Yep. That's the so in the Gothic one we have these these sort of curved screens, 
It's got the the angles on it. It's got a really. Can we fly over by the mainframe? The mainframe looks yeah, uh, totally. fantastic. The artists we had working on these just did such a phenomenal job. I know they all had a lot of fun. Trying to come up with like we, uh, I remember it was like, what does an eastern mainframe look like? You know, <laughs> yep. and it's like you end up with yep. this like cool like pagoda mainframe or something like that. Yep. There's like all different kinds of cool things in there. I think the eastern generator is one of my favorite actually. Oh yeah, those. I like are the so ancient generator too. So good. They look kind of they're like mysteriously magical. Yes. You know? it's very cool. Um, hey, let's put on a couple of let's show them some of the cool cool props that we have too um, to play with. Sure. I want to pop some of those up. Let's see what we got. Like, I want to see, like, a prehistoric animal of some kind. I don't care which one. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to find you. Mm. Oh, there's your zebra rug, huh? Zebra rug again. Confirmed. It's a zebra. And so what does the filter do up there, uh, uh, Andrew? So that filter there uh, will actually <coughs> sort through categories of our housing items. Yeah. So up there where it says all, you can click left and right, and it will uh, sort to items just for lighting, uh, things you would just decorate with. And each of those categories have a subcategory. Right. So under storage, you know, you have boxes, furniture, you have beds and seating, things like that. So it can uh, be pretty hard to find this all in a big list, not sorted. These categories make it much more manageable. Nice. And you can even filter more specifically if you wanted to. Right. And if you know what you're looking for, you can like even type it in there and search. Sabertooth Tiger? Yeah. Or like type in saber tooth tiger, Brian. Saber. Or in the saber tooth bed. <laughs> Not in the bed. <laughs> <that. laughs> Go to all. Yeah, there's no saber tooth tiger bed. <laughs> that's, that's too bad. There should be. I know. I think it's. I think it's called the saber tooth tiger. This guy might not have it. Oh, he might not have it. Yeah. What about mammoth? Mammoth display. That's the one. I want to see that. Look at that thing. Boom. Awesome. Boom. <laughs> awesome. I like that. Very cool. Now, who wouldn't want that? I don't know. Well, Batman would want a dinosaur. He's more of a reptile guy, apparently. That's true. And, but if you're a more mammalian kind of uh, <laughs> hero or villain, villain, we got we got you covered. So that's cool. Here, get the icon off it. Cool. Yep. Nice. So, and you can rotate that around and place it wherever you want to. Maybe it greets people at your entrance or it's <laughs> private for you in your bedroom. I don't know. However you want to roll with that. Um, but there's all different kinds of cool things. What other, what ones, what's your favorite? Let's go see. I have a few favorites in here. I like a lot of our gym stuff. A lot of our lab stuff. Mm, let's see if I can find some favorites down here. Oh, there's that Japanese uh, Zen garden. It's always cool. Rock garden, very nice. Yep. How about the suit of armor? That was one of armor is pretty cool. And you, can, and you can get more than one of these items, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's just something that's important. So once you find the suit of armor, it's not like um, uh, universal, like you just have as many suits of armor as you want. If you want to put two suits of armor flanking your front door, you need two suits of armor. Uh, you can, if you only found the one, then you can only place one, and that's true across all your layers, right? These are, these have a persistent count, and if you want multiples, you need to find them. But the cool part is that all of these props are tradable. That's right. <laughs> you start the room store, put them on the broker. These are all getting traded. So there's a whole secondary market that you guys can engage in when it comes to props. If you've got the wheelchair, you know, chair already, or the Vespa. Uh, and you want to trade it for somebody for the saber-toothed tiger or the you know pterodactyl, um, you know more power to you. You can arrange trades. You can sell these things on the marketplace. Um, uh, sorry, on the uh, auction house, all you want. So there you go. Oh, what was that, dude? Blacksmith. Yeah. Game. What? How cool is that? That's pretty cool. So again, all different kinds of flavors, and there'd be more of a modern version of this too, right? Kind yeah, of a techie correct. forge kind of yep. look. So you can build your suit of armor. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. There you go. All right, wow, how very larpy of you. Okay, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's uh, let's pop out of here and go check out a fully decorated Gothic base. Um, we can probably just uh, warp to it using our warp to base feature. Let's hope I got this right. Warp to base. I think it's that third one. Yeah. For an environment artist, this is housing's like the dream. Oh, that's the, the same the one. The dream component because you're just pretty much can build whatever you want to build, right? Like if I feel like coming in and building a woolly mammoth, I can build a woolly mammoth. Nice. I didn't get to build a woolly mammoth, but. <laughs> All right, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a haul. Uh, I'll just super speed it. 
supersonic. There we go. All right, so um, yeah, there you have it. There's some some cool props. How you place the props. Um, so t uh, Andrew, talk about how, where you find these things in the game. So these will be in all of your leveling and grouping content. You'll be able to find these in alerts, raids, duos, challenges, anywhere where you'd be fighting content in our game. Uh, the really cool stuff will be coming from, of course, the harder content and some of the, you know, uh, amenities you'd have in college, maybe the wire spool table, you find in some of the easier content. Okay, <laughs> so the fire spool table. Do you know, I think our lead systems guy actually had one of those up until the uh, launch of the game. And, and then <laughs> when his girlfriend moved back out here, I think the wire spool, the spool wire table, like, went away. Had to go? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was complemented by the old giant Sony TV uh, box as well as a, a side table, I think. You Cinder box? Yeah. Piece of two by, couple two by fours. And no, that really box. thick. Like, oh yeah, you could do that one. The cinder block board table. We have that actually. I think there's there's an item that's actually boards right, with cinder me, blocks I know, on I know it. we have that. There is a wire spool table. There's a wire spool table. table. We got it all covered. If if you've had any experience with it throughout your life, it's probably in here in some form or another. Agreed. All right, so here's cool like a gothic one, right? The uh, yes. deco you did had much more kind of modern feel to the furniture. It, it really matched up really well. Absolutely. And you guys did more of a kind of antique -y feel here for the gothic one, which I think looked great. Wow. Yeah, when we went through and decorated these, we just wanted to kind of play up to the strengths of it. Looks really good. Oh, look here. You come back after a hard day of villainy, you get your harp on. <laughs> <laughs> there are six suits of armor lying in the wall. That's pretty cool. So if somebody went out and found six suits of armor so they could do that yes. really cool thing. And again, that's you can find the drops, or if you're, you have something somebody else wants, go ahead and trade for it. Right. There you go. Oh, wow. Now, actually, before we get out of here, um, do me a favor. Uh, let's see if we have an emblem plaque. Let's go to the deco, uh, the deco area, control oh, panel. Okay, we're in the top. Oh, wow. oh, hot tub. Hot tub time machine. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go to deco mode. Now, let's. Uh, one thing we wanted to do, we do uh, take your colors and stick them in here in the trim. Yes. You can change them, obviously. But if you find a drop, which is a deck, uh, uh, emblem plaque, let's put one of those on the wall, you can actually start decorating your lair with your emblem. Work. Right there is good. It might be too big to fit there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? They're they're, they're pretty big because we want. I right, go know, back really, in the other room. We really want your your emblem to be huge, so to really show mm -hmm. off. There, how look, awesome all up there, up top or something. Here? Sure, why not? Yep. So you know you can't walk two steps in the bat cave without tripping over a bat symbol. So we wanted to make sure that uh, you had that opportunity too. A lot of scrolls, whiteboards, all kinds of things. You know people are going to be slowing this down frame by frame so they can see every single one of those you things. You might need to search. Yeah, you want to do a search for, is it uh, emblem? I think emblem's in there. Can you do a filter also search for I'm emblem? Also, plaque. Oh, plaque or emblem? Yeah, one plaque. There you go. Let's get do down. gothic emblem plaque. Perfect. All right, so you pop uh, that up there. Woohoo! There it is. And that uh, shows up. And do you have an emblem on your dude? Uh, so put an emblem on your dude. And there's a the emblem plaque Nine. Is style. That's ass. We didn't prepare for that, right? Okay. <laughs> I will next you time, guys. We'll, it, yeah, it, we'll we'll show you the emblem plaque next time. But imagine your emblem here, and you can <laughs> sort of put those around wherever you want to, and uh, you know, really kind of uh, get your lair looking like it's yours you know you really branded it toward your character oh absolutely yeah we and we did one to match each of the different amenity themes uh, we made them big so that they show up really nice uh, you could place them anywhere yeah pretty much free place everywhere cool maybe our next character will have an emblem on it and we can show that differently yep maybe we'll get through. so speaking of let's log out um, and change characters here so what we just showed you guys were the props that are going to all be dropping in the game. Well, we didn't show you all the props, but <laughs> all the props will be dropping in the game at launch. Um, you've seen a bunch of those, how you put them into the layers. You'll be getting um, a gothic and deco-themed deco base, uh, specifically a lair. Um, There's your select screen. Oh, yeah, let's see that, see that really quick. So you get a lair character select screen, obviously, which is looking really cool. Everybody's favorite woolly mammoth is up in the corner saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Peeking down. 
All right, so we're going to pop out here and just switch over to another account. Now, um, the other account that we're going to, oh, yeah, can you enter in MKTG20? Okay. Um, and what we're going to be doing is showing you all of the layers that will be released on the marketplace um, along with uh, when the DLC DLC hits. So you don't need to buy a theme off the marketplace if you don't want to. You can go with Gothic or Deco. And in fact, there's a third one, which is based off of the free-to-play hideout that people get called a dive. You That's right. That's right. Everyone, when when housing, when DLC 7, what are we at? 6. 6, sorry. When DLC 6 goes live, everyone will get a hideout. And so it's it's a lot smaller. It's roughly about the size of that first area where you first start. And, and it has so no real mainframe, no dis no dispenser, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. It, and it's very small, but it, it'll give everyone that plays without, you know, for free, uh, or doesn't buy the DLC. It gives everyone the ability to, to drop and place and decorate. So, yeah, exactly. So if you're finding couches and chairs and woolly mammoths and things like that while you're playing, you got something to do with them. You That's can right. either sell them if you want, or you can decorate your hideout. That's right. And so what we've done with this character is we've made four layers, each using the one of the marketplace themes around the Nightstone area. So we're just going to do a quick tour of the four layers that you're going to be seeing on the marketplace. And the first one is an ancient theme. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of fun with this one. Ancient's pretty cool. It's actually probably one of my favorite, I think. That and Eastern. I'm going to... I I agree. So Ancient's really, really cool. So here's this kind of really neat, you know, mortar and stone kind of looking, you know, environment with the columns and the pillars, the old torches. You know, what, I think you guys did a great job on this. This one looks awesome. Yeah. It's really the, good. Our, the, our team had a lot of fun putting this together. And the amenities, you can see, they kind of have this really classic kind of look to them. Yes. Uh, almost like kind of a marble. Like with a Roman a kind of feel to it. Definitely. But with the little runes going on. Can you run down by the generator? The generator is okay. really cool looking. There we go. Yeah, so this is the, this is our current layout. So all the different layers that you're going to get, they all have the same layout in them. The amenities are in the same place. You don't find the generator, the mainframe. Those will all be in the same spot. Um, so, this is the this is the ancient one, and perfect tone for the blacksmith. I know. Forward. Does this guy have an uh, Does this guy have a emblem? Let's find out. No, we should change that. No, you can uh, just go on him. That finger. Sausage finger. <laughs> None. <laughs> just scrubs. Oh, the scrub fails. fails. Okay, so we'll show you the emblem plaque next time. All right, let's pop out of here. Uh, let's hold, head over to the next one. So that's the uh, ancient layer be available on the marketplace. And like I said, when you purchase a layer theme or you have a layer theme in your in, in, with the DLC, all of the amenities come with it, plus some other things which I'll get into when I talk about the mainframe and the dispenser. But um, you know, when you buy the ancient theme, it comes with all of its styled amenities and everything like that too. You don't have to find those in the game or buy them separately or anything like that. Dude, was there a guy right down there? There was totally a guy down there. He's distressed. I think, he, well, let's put him out of his misery. I mean, oh, poor distressed guy. What's going on? Where's he going? What's he doing? He's like hiding in the corner. Don't put baby in the corner. I think we saved him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, heroes. go to the base. Okay. Let's see here. This one is the bunker, I believe, which kind of gives you a more of a military feel. So you could match this up with a lot of the. Um, kind of high tech props, the law enforcement props, some of the military props that look good in here. Yeah, there's all sorts of, of heavy duty. I'm building my suit of armor down here that I go around and fight the bad guys with. All the all that sort of cool looking. There's the mainframe for that, very tech looking. It's all it looks like it would hurt if you got hit with it. Definitely. You see that uh, you guys put the yellow like hazard tape kind of markings on the ground too. That thing looks cool. It's yeah. like you can tell like there's some kind of turbine in there or something yeah. like that. It's going to power all your awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
There we go. Okay, so let's uh, check out the next one. This is, again, we're just kind of running around the night zone. We just created a few of these so we could show you guys. That was uh, Bunker. And then probably everyone's sort of mouth-watering bullet point one. Cave! <laughs> the Milkman Cave. <laughs> the Cave's a blast. What's your character's name again? Oh, do you not want to out yourself? Oh, oh come on, idea. you chicken. I don't know. All right, he doesn't <laughs> want to out himself. So... All of the entrances to these uh, to these uh, lairs basically have um, are mostly in the interior of the city. Cave, however, is a little different. Cave entrances are all around the edges, where you kind of see all of the dirt and the rocks that are matching up with the shoreline and the city itself. Usually, that's where we put all the cave entrances. And this is one of those examples where it definitely has cave elements. But you can turn to the behind you here to the left, and um, Ben was talking about sort of. Um, uh, environments that pick up more of your color in different ways, and that wall to the left there is a, an example of one of them, I believe, right? Yep, that yeah. wall's picking up the red from your suit. There's other walls are going to be check picking up a lot more of the colors from the characters. Uh, and the, like the mainframe, all the different amenities in here, when we were discussing how we were going to make them look, we wanted this look like a base camp, like you had moved in here and kind of set up this portable portable set of gear. So it looks what like... What were you guys going for, too? You, it, I mean, it really does feel like Bat Cave itself, like, is kind of a mixture of the cave, and then he's built out everything inside of it. I mean, yes. is that a goal for you guys with this kind of hybrid look here? Exactly. That's exactly the kind of look we were going for, that that sort of... It's it's not just a cave, you know, We and we wanted it to look like you've been here, you set it up, and... We needed to make sure that people... You didn't just find a hole in the ground and yeah. crawl in? Yeah, because it would have been, kind of, <laughs> been kind of boring for people. <laughs> Can you imagine, too, you're in here and wondering if it's all going to collapse, you know? So <laughs> you put in all these supports and everything, so that all that all works out, makes it all safe. A little burst OSHA of compliant. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> for your superhero activities. All right, let's pop out and look at the, uh, the last one that's going to be on the marketplace. So the first three we talked about were Ancient, Bunker, and Cave. And then the last one is going to be uh, industrial. And we'll go, let's go ahead and uh, you can fly over there. It's fine. It's close enough. I was going to say you could warp to base, but it's close enough there. Yeah, it's just right down the right down the coast. Um, I, I like this one too. I think this one looks pretty cool. The industrial. It's a great place to live too, huh? Right yeah. In oh yeah, Omax everywhere. <laughs> it's a lovely place. <laughs> And these are all built off of the existing modular sets that we had. We did do some original and new art for them, but the, the bulk of the work went into the amenities and the different items themselves. And as you can see, we really pushed them. This one has some fantastic colors in it. Yeah, wow, maybe changing the colors uh, was a mistake. but <laughs> <laughs> No, no <laughs> it looks good. I like it. Oh, there's a sparring target. So this guy had the sparring target. So you can set up a sparring target here. we got all kinds of cool amenities that you'll be able to pop into. Uh, pop into here. I mean, basically, it's R and D. Do you want to run through each ones that are for launch? There's an R and D station. You've got your broker. You broker. Check your mailbox. Yeah. Your sparring target. Um. I'm missing. There's one more here. R and D station. You I got say, bank, right? right? Yeah, and bank. Bank's loud. There you go. So there's some. I let you. There's a vanity table on the left here. Keep going to the left, right there on that pillar, <laughs> which is like kind of like this weird, I think that's from the clown, like the fun house, like, or something, oh, isn't yeah. it? Or There's did you guys kind of model it to fit in that, in that fun house thing? Because yep. it's kind of... Or, you know, I really wanted to sell something for all of the clown fans that are Exactly, the clown makeup. There's a <laughs> the little kitty cat in the corner over there, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> something that would go, like, we looked at what we had, and then we wanted to take what we had in the game already and expand that into a bigger sorts of, big, bigger sets, really expand upon them. There's your, there's your, uh, there's your industrial there's your bank there. Yeah. So that's an amenity. You get to set that up if you choose to. And there are more amenities than there are amenity slots right now. So it's kind of like up to you which ones you want to trade off and and uh, and use. So I think that isn't that the funhouse, uh, the funhouse wardrobe over there. The samurai, absolutely. Yeah, look at that. That's funhouse. I think one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, see if you have the funhouse chair. All right. See if you have the tongue chair. That thing is hilarious. You're Brian to find for us. Yeah. Brian, get ready to do a filter. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Dentist chair. 
There it is. Look at the Tom chair. Oh, God, it just makes me think of Pee Wee Herman's <laughs> Pee Wee's Playhouse, doesn't it? Like, oh. Cherry, don't you want to hear a voice coming out of there and be like, Cherry? <laughs> and that chair, that chair's not for everybody. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to love that chair, though. We yeah. wanted to make, we, we did our best to make sure that whatever style you want, there's going to be something in there for you. Yeah, right you just got to find them. You just got to hunt them down. Or there. trade for them. Yep. Or whatever. All right, so that's basically it. Um, you know, we've, we've got, uh, we went over the entrances with you the other day in Deeds. Now we've gone over, like, what layer themes will be at launch. The art, Deco and Gothic and Dive come with the DLC, and then there's the um, Ancient, Bunker, Cave, and Industrial are going to be on the Marketplace. Um, they all come with their own amenities. And they're fully customizable with the props that you can find in the game. And you can see the, the sort of width and breadth of all the stuff we've created. Um, I think there's over 400 um, objects oh. at, la at, at, at launch. There's like 400 objects that we have. Yep. Uh, with Absolutely. more on the way after um, that. We have so many things to give you. Well, for you to hunt down. Um, okay, so that's about it uh, for our current current look at this. Next time we're going to cover some other stuff. Uh, we're going to get to mainframe and dispenser and layer functionality next time. But first we wanted to show you how you kind of make these places your own, you know, customize these spaces. So if you have any questions, I'm going to do some follow up on, uh, on Twitter with you guys. So if you have any questions about what you've seen today, go ahead and hit me at at spittle. Uh, hit me up with your questions at, at spittle at S-P-Y-T-L-E. You can see it in ginormous letters right there. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, and hit me up with whatever questions you have on layer themes, customization, props, and, and stuff like that. I'll be fielding other questions on uh, uh, other topics about the DLC after later webcasts. Right now I'm going to stick to just layer themes and, and customization. So shoot me your questions. Um, uh, ben, Andrew, thank you so much for running through this with everybody. I'm sure everybody loved what they saw. You guys did some tremendous work on getting uh, you and your teams on getting the props and the, and the stuff ready for home turf. And I'm really excited for everybody to see your stuff. Um, you can also always follow us on, uh, on Twitter for DCUO, at DCUO. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, and we also have, uh, obviously, our forums at dcuniverseonline.com. So, um, you know, come and ask your questions of the community or, uh, or us on our, our community staff here or directly to me at, at Spittle, and we will talk to you next time, and hope you guys like what you see. Take care. Thanks. Thanks.